One minute and 30 seconds to go. There are heaters as well and the solid rocket boosters. It'll be deactivated in the next uh, 20 seconds or so. And then at 50 seconds, an important point, uh, transferring to internal power. In other words, the shuttle is no longer tied to the, to the shore, so to speak. Exactly. It'll have its own onboard power available at that point. And the real critical moment is at uh, 31 seconds, and that's the transition to the so onboard. Solid rocket booster joint heater is now being deactivated. At 31 seconds, the ground launch sequencer goes into auto sequence. As you see, the crowd gathering here beneath the countdown clock, the flags limp, the weather perfect, the shuttle apparently the same. Let's listen to NASA's George Diller and the radio calls between mission control, launch control, and the space shuttle Discovery. Standing by for the handoff to Discovery's computers. T minus 31 seconds, the handoff has occurred. Discovery's computers now controlling. Twenty-five. Firing chain is armed. Twenty. Sounds of pressure water system is active, being activated. Brain safe systems armed. T minus ten seconds. Go for main engine start. Seven, six, five. Three engines up and burning. Three, two, one, and liftoff of space shuttle Discovery, beginning America's new journey to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Go, and the vehicle Riley. has cleared the tower. The space shuttle Discovery on its way. This is a critical period of time, eight and a half minutes of, uh, well, a lot of a lot of violence, you might say, to get them to space. What's it like now on board there? Right now, they're feeling a lot of shaking on board the flight deck. They're about to go supersonic, and you'll hear the call to throttle down, which is when they're going through max aerodynamic pressure. And you'll hear the vehicle in behind us is just roaring inside the solid rocket boosters, and you can feel that on board the, on board the shuttle inside. And you can see on the, the outside of the vehicle, the shocks are forming right now as they're going supersonic. Those are, those are actually called shock collars, and uh, that occurs, it's, it basically makes the water vapor condense as it goes through at supersonic speeds, right? Exactly. In fact, uh, they're forming the shots and they're continuing to accelerate until we'll hit about five times the speed of sound, when, uh, one about minute two minutes when we kick off the solid rocket boosters. Go at throttle up. All Sounds like Eileen is getting discovery. Altitude now nine miles. Eileen is getting rattled around a little Six bit miles. there as we hear the famous North go with throttle up call. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, they're go at throttle up and here for about another less than a minute. We're going to have the solid rocket boosters kick off. And that's, then they'll a, that's a key point. We should point out that once you light those solid rocket boosters, there's no turning them off. And that first couple of minutes is very critical because there aren't many abort scenarios that work in that situation. There are no. Exactly. In fact, we're pretty much along for the ride for that first two minutes and 17 seconds on the solid rocket boosters. Uh, everything happens pretty quick after that for the next six and a half minutes on the three main engines as we continue to accelerate uphill as they will today. Uh, until you hit uh, orbital velocity here at uh, eight and a half minutes at 17,500 miles an hour. Right at two minutes, we should see those solid rocket boosters drop off. You'll see a little flare. Off they go, like uh, tossing a couple of cigarettes out of a fast-moving car. Booster officer confirms. And that's a good moment. You do. Absolutely. We used to all breathe a sigh of relief at that moment because, of course, we thought of Challenger. Speed now, 3,030 um, miles per hour. Altitude, 33 miles, 40 miles. Not bad. Downrange 40 miles of altitude in two, two and a half minutes, that's not bad. I'd that's say that's a, a decent move. performance. But nevertheless, there's still a lot of peril here because you've got another six minutes of powered flight. What's exactly. going on now? Right now, the, they've, the, everything is smoothed out on the flight deck. So all of all of the vibration that they had on the solid rocket boosters has now gone away. And they're now uh, waiting for the next uh, calls, which will be a negative return call, which means they're through the RTLS capability. Two engines. There it goes, sir. Now they're picking up the two-engine tower calls. Which, which means, means you lose two engines, you can make it to Spain. If right? you lose one engine, oh, you can okay. make it on the two remaining engines Got to you. Spain. Okay. All systems in good condition. Altitude now 254,000 feet, or about 48 miles. Discovery speed 4,500 miles per hour. 85 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. You're listening to the voice of James Hartsfield, who is in uh, Houston at uh, Public Affairs office there, uh, Officer there, sitting in Mission Control. Uh, the same man who brought us the terrible news about the loss of Columbia two and a half years ago. This picture is really designed for engineers to make sure they don't see debris, but it's 
an awful lot of fun for us to kind of go along for the ride, isn't it? Absolutely. You're looking from the top of the tank down the belly of the orbiter, and they're sticking out of the right side, or the left side as you're looking at it, is the right wing of the orbiter discovery. And you can see the uh, edge of the Earth in the background there. Back down to the ground here, the flag still flapping ever so nicely, and uh, now. about three minutes or so into the mission, where are we on the potential abort scenarios now? Right now we're still in the uh, two-engine tow, and we've got the negative return call, which means they won't come back to, to your Kennedy Space Center for anything that happens now. They'll continue on across the ocean. That were required. All systems remain go for discovery. Altitude and speed are their friend now, and each bit of it that they gain, they get another option, another possibility, another place to go if something should go wrong. And in about uh, 20 seconds, they're basically in a scenario where uh, they could make an abort to orbit, right? Exactly. Anything that happens here, uh, as we said, in about uh, 12 seconds, we're going to be pressed to ATO. In other words, if anything happens, they continue on to orbit. And, and this is where astronauts say all that simulation, all that training, never had to use it. Absolutely. But that's a good thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. You say, they, I've heard this portion of the launch called the electric ride because it's almost like riding a smooth train or something. Is it really like it that? It really is. It's uh, very, very smooth. Once uh, you come off the solid rocket boosters, it is very, very smooth on the three main engines. In the last two minutes, they'll be feeling the, the force of three times the force of gravity through their chest as they're doing the final accelerations. And there's our Presta ATO call, which means that they could lose an engine at this point, and they'll continue on to orbit. We could reach a lower than planned but safe orbit on only 10 engines if needed. All three engines did drop right well at full throttle. Speed now 8,000 miles per hour. Altitude 67 miles, 300 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Is that a moment where you breathe a sigh of relief, or do you wait until the main engine cutoff comes well, up? Well, of course, you're waiting for main engine cutoff, but the rookies, Soichi and, uh, and Charlie, have passed the magic 60-mile mark, so they are now true astronauts in the They're now officially the astronauts. I, I suppose they, they put the astronaut pin on a little later, right? When they come home, yeah, there'll yeah. be a ceremony for that. Look at this great picture here as we see the sun shining on the belly of Discovery there. And like I like we said, this camera was put in in direct response to the debris strike which occurred in Colombia, but gives us a wonderful sense of where they are. You see the Earth beneath uh, as they uh, make their way into space. I didn't get the altitude call just a moment ago, but they, they've gone a long way in a short period of time. Those calls that Discovery could reach its planned orbit on only two engines if needed. All three continue to operate well at full throttle. Just under two minutes to cut off of the main engines now. Discovery Houston, we see a nominal shutdown plan. You will be go for the plus X and go for the pitch maneuver. All right, give us a, give, translate that for us, plus X and the pitch maneuver. And what they're going to do is when they release the tank, one of the things they want to do is get photographs of the tank uh, on orbit. So they'll do a pitch maneuver, they'll plus X away, and then basically shove themselves forward from the tank, pitch up, and then they'll take photographs from the shuttle. There's a pretty good chance they're going to see that, right? Is that possible, or will we, that camera still be recording at that point? Can at that just... point, we may lose the signal, but we're getting a great signal right so now far, of so the vehicle good. in the roll. The heads up, you can see the Earth's limb in the background back there. That's that was the heads up roll because what they do is most of the ascent they're kind of you might call it upside down but it doesn't feel like that right exactly yeah you're in your seat so you don't really feel uh, the, the sensation of being upside down but you can certainly see it out the out the windows and and on the instrumentation inside the cockpit engines are now beginning to throttle back to prevent the spacecraft from experiencing forces in excess launch pad 39b the only thing more pretty to nasa then a shuttle on the pad is that site, an empty Speed launch down. pad, two and a half years 14, later, and what appears to be a flawless ascent to orbit. 700 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. 30 seconds to cut off of the main engines. And as we say, that cut off of the main engine, eight minutes and 30 seconds in, which gets them into space and gets them on their way, that was the moment when astronauts used to breathe a sigh of relief. Columbia taught us something different, didn't it? Exactly, and that you can never relax your guard on, on this, this endeavor because it has a, we have very close margins. Well, it's interesting, you know, if you think about all the force we just witnessed and felt here, and, and our bones were rattling. I, I don't know if you, it's not something that comes across well on television, that sense of raw power. 
but that power has to be dissipated somehow, and that's what reentry is, after all, dissipation of that power. So you can understand the tremendous heat that is involved in all of that. by now for jettison of the external fuel tank. I think we're going to see this live, which is extraordinary. They've just gone through main engine cutoff, so the main engines have now shut down. Those guys are in zero G. Look at that. There goes, there goes the Discovery and the tank. Part their ways. The tank will make its Live way. television as uh, Discovery jettisons its That's spectacular. Fuel tank. The tank will be. Uh, the cutoff of Discovery's main you can engines. See, you can see the, the jets firing. The, the jets firing to do just what we saw there. Ensure clean separation from the tank. Copy the and they'll pitch over now and look back at the tank and take some photographs. One is not required. And that's a great call. That Ohm's one not required indicates they're in a good orbit and a good circular orbit. He's talking about the orbital maneuvering system, which are rockets that uh, do significant changes in your orbit. And if you don't need to use it, that means that you've had a great launch, essentially. And that's good news. Uh, seeing that uh, separation, that, that was spectacular. That was that's something. It's the first time we've ever seen yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't that expect we would, would have that live capability all the way there. But uh, the, the external fuel tank now makes its way toward a, a controlled entry into the Indian Ocean. It breaks up, most of it burns up, little tiny pieces fall into the Indian Ocean. It's the only significant piece of the shuttle that is not reused. Those solid rocket boosters that you saw that came off two minutes in, they have parachutes attached. They go into the ocean. They're fished out by uh, some boats that bring them back. It takes them a little while to get them back, but they're ultimately reconditioned, restacked, and reused. Well, spectacular launch. Jim Riley, you did a good Absolutely. job, Thank and you very much. we are not done here. We're going to come back in just a little bit, and we're going to resume our conversation about NASA, about this mission. We'll take another look at that spectacular launch. Look at them. They're putting their coats on and uh, saying, all in a day's work here at the Launch Control Center and the firing room here Seven, at the Kennedy six, Space Center. Five, back with more special coverage in just a moment. Three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery beginning America's new journey to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And the vehicle has cleared the tower. Houston's now controlling. Commander Officer Collins confirmed the discovery. 